views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. On the cutting edge of the new mainstream, Christine Upchurch is passionate about bringing together science, psychology, and spirituality in a way that can be applied to our everyday lives for true transformation. The Christine Upchurch Show, stellar conversations to illuminate your journey, engages some of the most inspired visionaries on the planet in lighthearted, lively dialogue. Join us as we explore the expansive nature of reality in a down-to-earth way, offering you insights and tools empowering you to become that bright light you're meant to be now here's your host christine upchurch hello everybody welcome to the christine upchurch show where we have stellar conversations to illuminate your journey i'm speaking to you today from uh sunny cloudy who knows what seattle it it's changes. a potpourri of weather it is and it and it you know when i left my house it was bright and sunny and i thought Hey, I can announce it's sunny today, you know, and, and if people are listening in the archives, I hate to tell you, but it's probably rainy. Um, anyway, it, and yet by the time I got here, it was kind of cloudy and it's, the weather's turning, but it, it feels like spring is in the air. My cats are begging to go out. The, uh, the birds are chirping. It's, it's, it's the change of seasons, even if it feels a little early this year. Your cat, your cat selfies or your cat fees are uh, on the rise lately. <laughs> yes. You've been taking quite a few of them. They look so adorable. <laughs> Yeah, they're they're very cute cats, and, and they're um, very photogenic. They are. Usually, yeah. cats run away. No, not yours. No, no they're no. like mm, no. mom's shall around. I, <laughs> shall I roll over yeah, and show right, my exactly. big fat belly? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's how we get our food. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I'm excited about today's show. We're still trying to connect with our guest, but we are going to be talking about the 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 energy of the heart. And you know, one of the things I've come to realize through my work as a healer through my own transformation, my own evolution in consciousness is the role of the heart is essential for us if we're on our paths. You know, here in the Western world, we are stuck in the mind so much and we feel like the brain is king. Scientists have actually started to show something different, but we're going to we're going to be talking about that later. But the thing is, if if the heart is really the the, the guiding light of our lives, I want you to ask yourself today, how much credence have you given to the messages from your heart as opposed to all the, the, the messages you've been getting from your mind? Because I think that it's, it's really important for us to kind of self-reflect about these things because if you're like me, you probably get stuck in the mind, the to-do list, the, you know, going to work and doing one thing or another. And, you know, in my work, I get to have great joy in sort of connecting with an individual and then sort of going to the space of allowing and connecting with their energy field and seeing what wants wants to unfold. But still, in the rest of my life, I tend to get into this to-do list kind of thing and should have, could have, would have kind of stuff. And that is so disconnected from the heart because the heart is present in the moment. And within the heart, even when there's sadness, even when there is distress, even when there's anger, there is a kind of stillness and acceptance about what is. And as I've talked about on my Vibration of Change shows, as I talk about in my Vibration of Change workshops, in that place of accepting what is, of, of allowing what is, of sort of having this ease around what is, in, in that space is where transformation occurs, where positive lasting change occurs. And that is the space you get to from the heart. So... Anyway, I want you to sort of self-assess and, and think, okay, how am I honoring what's in my heart at this moment? Maybe it's by tuning into a show and expanding your consciousness. Maybe it's by sitting down and putting your feet up if you've been really busy. Maybe if it's a matter of sort of allowing yourself to kind of be as opposed to do, which is something I think that we, we desperately need to do in this society. So... You know, I, I want you to honor that space of the heart because it is the place where transformation occurs. It's the place where the joyous experience within ourselves, that connection to our soul, and the connection with others occurs. So that 
I, that's that's just my little piece of advice for the day. And the connection has finally happened for us. Oh, too. we've got technological. The connection heart is as well. now no longer beating out of control. We found our guest. <laughs> hey, you know, I, <laughs> I've things learned, happen. We, we've learned not to panic, right? Yeah, Danny? sure. It, it, it is what it is, and there is perfection mm-hmm. in how things unfold. You got it. And there is perfection in who's my guest today. I'm so excited. So we have Howard on the phone. Is that right, Benny? That is very true. Yes. Wonderful. Well, we're we're going to be talking to Howard Martin, and we're going to be talking about this, the heart and the power of the heart. And he is um, one of the original leaders who helped develop heart math. He has been with the organization since, it, since its inception in 1991. And until I got this information, Benny, I didn't realize how long heart math has been around. Because, I mean, for the last decade, I know it's been the rage, but I didn't realize it, it was formed so long ago. In 1999, he co-authored with Doc Childre the Heart Math Solution, and it's it's a great book that helps you to figure out how you can connect with your heart and lower stress horm- hormones, um, shift your your anti-aging hormones on, and so on and so forth, increase your longevity, and he's played a key role in launching what we're going to hear more about today, the Global Coherence Initiative which is a science-based, and I love this, as a former research statistician turned energy healer, I love the the science. It's a science-based co-creative project to unite people in heart-focused care and intention to help shift our world in a scientific, measurable way. And he has served as a steering committee member and spokeswoman, uh, spokesman, spokesperson, (laughs) not spokeswoman, sorry. (laughs) I love live radio. Spokesman. Um for the Global um, Coherence Initiative since it, its inception in 2008. You know, he goes before Fortune 100 uh, companies. He goes before the military to share this. He is, um, he's got important positions on uh, two different organizations, the Leadership Council and Evolutionary Leaders. I'm so glad he's joining us here today, and we have made this connection. Howard Martin. Howard, welcome to the Christine Eptrich Show. Hey, Christine, thank you very much for having me. Pleasure. And I want to say hello to everybody who's listening, wherever you are around the world today or tonight or wherever it happens to be for you. And I'm looking forward to uh, our conversation about what's most meaningful to me, which is the intelligence of the heart. Uh And I tell you, Howard, um, did evaluation recently, and and we reach over 60 countries worldwide. So it's, it's a great time to talk about something global. But before we get into the global aspects, let's focus on the individual, just so that we can sort of get this framework um, put into place. So in, in Western culture, in Western society, we focus so much on the brain. You know, the, the, the medical research at one point was saying the brain is king, and certainly we're, we're focused more on the rational as opposed to the, the feeling-based um, aspects in our lives. What kind of research have you guys done to show that the heart is playing a more significant role than we once thought. Well, certainly, you know, first of all, let me say we're an integrated system. Um, intelligence is really distributed throughout the entire body. Uh, obviously, the brain is this magnificent organ that's interpreting all kinds of inputs and sorting, and analyzing, comparing, and providing context for us. Uh-huh. But what our research has always focused on was what is the heart doing besides pumping blood? Right. And we found that it's actually a very powerful information processing center in our bodies. It sends powerful healing commands to the brain and throughout the entire system. So there's a huge body of research that we've done over the years, not only on that, but also lots of social science research and energetic connectivity research. Uh A lot of research. But basically the story is that, you know, the heart does, in fact, communicate. It does it in four ways, neurologically, biophysically, biochemically, and energetically. Uh And they're well documented now. So the heart is more than a blood pump. It's part of our information and intelligence package. Okay, and so this information exchange, is it only within the individual or does it go beyond the individual? Uh, it certainly goes beyond the individual. Good question. The heart is an electrical organ, and it produces a electromagnetic field that extends around our bodies uh, in 360 degrees, goes beyond our skin out into space about three to four feet. And that's just at a measurement uh, level of, you know, with using Newtonian uh, physics, uh-huh. you know, using magnetometers, which are very conservative measurements. Right. So we have this field. That field contains information. It's constantly changing depending upon our emotional state. And we are broadcasting it. So we're all really connecting energetically. Every living system on this planet and beyond is connecting energetically, and it's through the heart that we make the strongest energetic connection. 
And that's so fascinating because on some level, I think many have known this for thousands of years. And yet with, you know, the dawning of, of the science over the last couple of hundred years, we were in denial of that. So it's great that there's measurements of that. Um, with, but do you think that we're capturing all the potential information that's out there? Or do you think that, there, that we're sort of lacking in, in measurement techniques? Well, I think we're lacking in some ways. I mean, I think that the scientist is brilliant these days, and there are a brilliant scientist all over the world doing very interesting research, Christine. Uh-huh. But I think that many of the things they're trying to measure are actually, you know, in another dimension. And we're trying to measure those with the, with the instrumentation and, and methodologies that we have in this dimension. So right. we're sort of hitting up to, on, you know, to a ceiling in a way uh-huh. where there's inference being made about a lot of amazing things. But at the same time, we can't quantify it totally. The things we can quantify, though, are giving new credence to things that we were talking about today, like heart, which has been recast now in a completely different way through not only heart mass research, but the research of others. Right, right. So, you know, I'm going to want to hear more about what you call coherence. We're, we're going to be sharing with our listeners um, how an individual can get into coherence using this approach. And then we're also going to be talking about um, the, the global project that's underway that is so exciting. I know there's some very big leaders in the world who are also uh, a part of this. But we're going to go to a quick break. More with Howard Martin from HeartMath when we return. Serenity Bliss Holistic Spa is a complete approach to wellness. Serenity Bliss offers integrated therapies for whole body health. From facials to massage, from laser skin treatments to herbal wellness, from chiropractic care to energy healing. We work with teens who want to put their best face forward, adults of all ages who want to maintain that youthful glow, and anyone who wants to enjoy vibrant well-being head to toe. Serenity Bliss Holistic Spa is bringing the European approach to restoring natural beauty and wellness here to the Seattle area. Located on the east side, off the beaten path, yet just minutes from the freeway. If you'd like to experience the joy of relaxation, skin care excellence, and total wellness, then come experience your Serenity Bliss. To learn more or to schedule an appointment, visit SerenityBlissHolisticSpa.com. That's SerenityBlissHolisticSpa.com. Or call 206-229-0086. On the cutting edge of the new mainstream, Christine Upchurch is passionate about bringing together science, psychology, and spirituality in a way that can be applied to our everyday lives for true transformation. The Christine Upchurch Show, stellar conversations to illuminate your journey, engages some of the most outstanding visionaries on the planet in lively dialogue to inspire you to become that bright light you're meant to be. Join Christine every Friday at 11 a.m. Pacific Time on KKNW, a.m. 1150, and Transformations Talk Radio. This is Peggy Snow, practitioner at Stellar Reflections with a Stellar Reflections Minute. So many people these days are trying to find ways to relieve their stress. What happens to our breathing when we're feeling overwhelmed and stress? When we tune in, we realize that we're either holding our breath or taking very shallow breath. To signal the body that all is well, which most of the time it is, sometimes all that is needed is a nice, deep breath to break the cycle. First, exhale to get all the stale air out by engaging the abdominal muscles and blowing gently. Next, take a nice full breath in, feeling it fill your body all the way down to your hips. Release fully and enjoy the freedom of movement. Notice how your body feels. Do you feel refreshed? Calmness is only a breath away. This has been a Stellar Reflections Minute. For more information about what we offer at Stellar Reflections, visit us at StellarReflections.com or call 425-999-9836. That's 425-999-9836. Welcome back to the Christine Eptrick Show here on KKNW, uh, WBLQ, CRN, and Transformation Talk Radio. I am talking today with Howard Martin of HeartMath. Now, Howard... You know, before um, the break, we were talking about um, the communication from the heart. And we're not just talking about what we've known sort of on an intuitive level, on an emotional level. You are talking about scientifically based communication from the heart. And I know that with HeartMath, your organization, 
you focus a lot on something called coherence. Can you please share with our listeners what that is? I'd be glad to, Christine. You know, first of all, let me say about our scientific research. It, it was never intended to take the heart out of heart. Mm-hmm. What it was designed to do is to give us some, some empirical understanding of things that we do feel inside, that we do have an, an intuitive connection to. And I think the power in that is, is when something is, is shown to be empirically valid, it increases the power of belief. Uh-huh. And so the research that we've done, to me, the most important part of it is to help us all have a new connection to our heart and to believe in it more. Right. So coherence is a state that we were able to measure when heart-brain-body communication is at an optimal level. You see it reflected through things like the synchronization in the autonomic nervous system. That's one of the ways you can see it. Uh Also, the information that's being exchanged between heart and brain. So coherence is this really cool state that's both physiological and psychological. At the physiological level, it's when all the body systems begin to synchronize to the rhythmic beating pattern of the heart. Mm -hmm. They all come together, and that's digestion, respiration, the immune system response, hormonal response, brain function, all that syncs up. So we end up in this really efficient, super healthy, high-performance physiological state. So we train athletes, for example, you know, football players, uh, soccer players, Uh Olympian athletes, professional golfers. You know, a lot of those people go through coherence-based training with us because it improves them at the physiological level, Mm -hmm. reaction speed time, visual field, those kind of measurements. But the psychological part is interesting as well. Coherence is sort of naturally triggered when we are experiencing a positive emotion. Let's say we're taking that walk in the woods, or we're playing with our child or our grandchild, or we're really happy about a bit, you know, something that, that occurred in our life that you know, we can appreciate, we naturally go into a more coherent state. Mm-hmm. We can learn to trigger that state, and we have technology that helps train us to do that, as well as tools and techniques that we teach in our programs. But when you learn to trigger it intentionally, you create a positive emotional state within yourself, and then once you do, Christine, those type of emotions become more readily available. Mm-hmm. It's easier to feel good. Right. It's easier to feel appreciative. We have more care. We have more compassion. We have more understanding. All that happens in the coherent state. So coherence is a heart-related state. It's something we can learn to activate. We can learn to increase what I call our coherence baseline Uh so we operate in life more naturally coherent. And that's the thing that we discovered. There's a medical term for it. I'm I'm a southerner, so I'll say it the best I can. Uh, Psychophysiological coherence. Psychophysiological coherence, yeah. How did uh, I do? Uh, no, oh, you did, you did great. And, I, you know, I'm a southerner at heart, too, because I'm originally from Texas. But um, I could slur those and say it with a drawl, but I think I'm, I better keep it to psychophysiological <laughs> coherence. <laughs> you know, it, it's, it's funny, Howard, because many years ago, this is like late 80, 80s, early 90s, I had the early stages of lymphoma, and doctors had nothing to offer me, and I ended up healing myself. But one of the things that I would implement on a you know daily basis, two, three, four times a day, is I would actually remember what it felt like to fall in love and sort of get myself into that state. And I do believe it was an important part of um, my healing. And so that you know that that sounds a little bit like um, coherence, which brings me to the question: How does coherence affect us um, in terms of our health? It's a very healthy state, Christine. Um, we've seen a lot of results in these 26 years since we've been doing heart math that have been related to health. Uh-huh. We can't make health claims. We have laws against that in our country, and I think that's important that we do. But I can say we've had so many people that have improved things like heart arrhythmias, uh-huh. um, lowering of blood pressure, uh, improvements in, in diabetes. It goes on and on and on. But some of the biggest changes that have occurred were psychological. Reductions in people feeling anxious wow. and depressed yeah. are huge, and we've seen a lot of that. There are, and just in the one segment in Heart Mass Database that is segmented as health professionals, there are over 40,000 health professionals that use Heart Math in some form to treat patients. 40,000, wow, that's a lot. And many of those are mental health professionals that are using uh-huh. Heart Math to try to help people through these changing times to overcome some of the, the things that many of us are going through, many people are, are dealing with, like a heightened state of anxiety sure, sure. or the sadness and depression or sense of hopelessness that many people feel sometimes as we go through this, this era of super high-speed change. Yeah. So coherence is definitely a very health-inducing state, and I would believe that in the exercise that you mentioned where you tried to re-experience the feeling of being in love, uh-huh. I guarantee you that had a positive impact and was a key part of your healing process. Yeah, yeah. 
And um, the, the other key part for me, you know, in addition to the, the visualization that, that I, I think was also sort of the letting go. And one of the things I was talking about um, early on bef- before you joined us on the show was how that, that the, the place of the heart, when you're in the heart state, you really are in this place of surrender as opposed to, you know, trying to control things, trying to make things happen. So that that probably affects stress hormones too, right? Absolutely, yeah. I think, you know, what we've seen too is that when um, – well, I'll give you an example. It's really cool. I mentioned that there's a biochemical communication. The heart actually produces hormones. Uh-huh. It was reclassified wow. in 1983 as part of our hormonal system. I had no idea it produced hormones. I know. It's called. It's one of those things I call a who knew, you know, yeah. <laughs> because it was in the research literature, but who knew about it? Right. And it produces, one of the hormones it produces is called atrial peptide, and one of atrial peptide's jobs is to reduce the release of the stress hormone cortisol. Interesting. I found that fascinating. It also, the heart also produces a hormone called oxytocin, which yeah. many of the listeners have probably heard of. Oh, yeah. It's generically called the love hormone. It's produced in greater amounts when we are in loving states. I've also seen recent research connecting oxytocin production to trust and empathy. Interesting. Yeah, well, that turns makes out sense. That yeah. One of the major producers of oxytocin in our body is the heart. How about that? And and I know that a, as a, a mom who nursed her babies, it's it's like that the oxytocin gets released, and there's just such a sense of love and being in that present moment and connection that is just fabulous. So it's it's very exciting to hear that that comes from the heart. Well, I think that you know it's, it's still being studied, but I've seen things indicating that the heart may be the largest producer of oxytocin in the body. Interesting. I can't say that for sure, but it's uh-huh. some indications that it could be. Right, right. Yeah, and I know that um, from a scientific perspective, there's so many things to rule out. It's, it, you know, but the fact that they've identified it as coming from there is very, very exciting. Yes, it is. So we know that the that coherence is a feel-good state. How does the person find their way into coherence? Well, I think many of the things that people do or whether they understand it that way or not, or designed for that. I mentioned things like, you know, taking that walk in the woods uh-huh. or being with someone that you care about or love. Certainly many people have personal growth or spiritual practices. Their sure. meditations, their prayers, their affirmations, their intentions, all of those can be engendering coherence as well. Heart math has tools and techniques that are incorporated in what we call the heart math system which is tools, techniques, and methods all underpinned with scientific research and even supported by our coherence-building technologies. And so we have a method for that, but uh-huh. I think many of the systems out there that, are, that people are using, whether it's their mindfulness meditations or some other personal growth process, things people do, mm-hmm. they really do help to engender coherence. Right. The best way to do it that I know of from a very common sense, day-to-day practical sense, is to try to self-activate positive emotions. Mm. Right in the middle of me starting to judge somebody in a business meeting. Sure. Instead, have some compassion. Right. Uh, Try to maintain a a feeling of appreciation about what's going on in my life rather than focusing on what's not going right and complaining Mm -hmm. about it. Right, right, yeah. Those are the simple things that I think that we sometimes take as being too simple, but they have such a powerful effect on co-creating the life that we were meant to have. Yeah, and and that's that's really exciting. Um, So... uh, I know that you're saying that there are many, you know, ways that we can sort of access this, this, you know, heart-brain coherence. Um, but I'm curious about your system. How do you measure it? You measure it through looking at a, uh, the primary measurement. There's many ways, but the, the primary measurement is looking at heart rate variability. Mm-hmm. And I'll just simply say that's looking at heart rhythms. Now, it's not like measuring heart rate on a fitness monitor. Uh-huh. With heart rate variability, you're measuring the rhythmic beating pattern of the heart. You're measuring the timing between the heart beats. Because, you know, the heart beats, we see that big, it pumps, right? Uh And then it reloads and pumps again. Well, that timing between each time it pumps is constantly varying. It's supposed to. And so we want a lot of variability, but we also want to have the ability to control or modulate that variability. And so... Heart rate variability is a measurement of nervous system synchronization. Uh It's a measurement of heart-brain communication. Because we lose variability as we get older, it's a very reliable measurement of aging. Interesting. 
and it's a measurement of cardiovascular health. So we found that to be true. It was an interesting story. Doc Childry, our founder, was talking to our director of research one day early, early on in heart math. Mm -hmm. We were trying to find ways to measure these things. And, and we were looking at EKG signals and other forms of measurement. And Doc looked at our director of research and said, uh, look at uh, the space between the heartbeats. Uh -huh. And he didn't know what that meant. Right, right. <laughs> so he found heart rate variability, and our scientists have become some of the leading experts in the world in heart rate variability. We really introduced that in a new way. And now heart rate variability is very, very popular in lots of different ways, including the new fitness monitors and Fitbits and things that people will have. Sure. As well as uh, in the biofeedback community. So it's much bigger today than it ever was. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that has to do with, I think, um, our contribution to it. Right, right. And that's, and that's exciting. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I know that it goes beyond the, um, the individual coherence, and we're going to be talking more about that. But I just want people to know how they can get in touch with you guys and also get some of the equipment. I've actually seen Greg Braden demonstrate it, and um, I've actually been a part of some healers who are researched according to the, you know, the, the heart rate variability and coherence. Um, and it's, it's kind of exciting, but it's really exciting that you can actually put something on your computer and measure your own coherence, right? You can even put it on your, on your phone or your tablet. <laughs> wow, wow. So yeah. how do people find out more about the technology that they can bring into their personal lives. About the technology, just go to heartmath.com. If you have an Apple product, an iPhone or iPad, iTouch, that kind of thing, you can get the Inner Balance Trainer. You download an app for free that measures heart rate variability and then scores your coherence levels for you and trains you how to become more coherent. You buy a sensor that plugs into that phone to operate it. If you don't have an Apple product, you can get M-Wave, E-M-W-A-V-E. -E. It's a handheld device uh -huh. uh, that measures this exactly the same way with the same technology, same algorithms. Or you can get it for your computer. You can run it on your desktop computer, and there's a pro version for that, for health professionals and people that do that sort of work as well. So there are three versions of the same technology. You can see that, see pictures, read about it, all of that at heartmath.com. Yeah, yeah, it's a great website, and... Um but we've got lots more to talk about. We have to go to quick breaks. Stay tuned for more with Howard Martin. What is a master soul gardener? With Nomi Bahar, you can be one too. Her revolutionary Gates of Power method is a comprehensive program that addresses every aspect of yourself and gives you the tools to tend to the seeds of your soul's garden. Let Nomi guide you through and beyond what's holding you back and help you embrace the life you've always dreamed of. To learn more about upcoming classes and workshops, visit gatesofpower.com today. What if your body and mind were the compasses to the secrets, mysteries, and magic of life? Glenna Rice, co-host of The Questionable Parent, is inviting you to access all that is possible. Glenna is a 10-year certified veteran access consciousness facilitator who offers an amazing variety of life-changing classes and workshops. Work with Glenna from anywhere with teleclasses and workshops all over the globe. To learn more and see Glenna's current schedule of events, classes, and workshops, visit GlennaRice.com. Called the Oprah of Radio by her listeners. Award winning host Dr. Pat Basili is blowing the doors off of traditional talk radio. Get ready for an energizing delivery and powerful interviews with leaders in the field of human potential. Dr. Pat's fresh new perspective on living life full out has catapulted her show to the top of talk radio. Tune in and Dr. Pat will help you thrive instead of merely survive. Visit the drpatshow.com. That's T H E D R Pat Show.com for listening times in your area. I'm Christy Nepchurch, and this is a Stellar Reflections Minute. For centuries, spiritual traditions have talked about how humans have an energy field, or aura, surrounding them. Although skeptical scientists refuted this for decades, science is now beginning to catch up with spirituality. Scientists can actually measure light emanating from living beings, so they can measure the human aura, which in scientific terms is known as the biofield. Many medical practitioners around the world use an instrument to evaluate a patient's biofield for the purpose of diagnosing illness. 
They understand that imbalanced or insufficient light in a person's energy field indicates a physical or emotional problem. The good news? There are ways to balance and increase your light, resulting in greater well-being. For more information, please check out StellarReflections.com or call 425-999-9836. That's 425-999-9836. On the cutting edge of the new mainstream, Christine Upchurch is passionate about bringing together science, psychology, and spirituality in a way that can be applied to our everyday lives for true transformation. The Christine Upchurch Show, stellar conversations to illuminate your journey, engages some of the most outstanding visionaries on the planet in lively dialogue to inspire you to become that bright light you're meant to be. Join Christine every Friday at 11 a.m. Pacific Time on KKNW, AM 1150, and Transformation Time. Talk Radio. Welcome back to the Christine Epture Show here on KKNW, WBLQ, CRN, and Transformation Talk Radio, reaching more than 60 countries worldwide. Now, we're back talking about heart math. We're talking to Howard Martin. He is the author, the co-author of The Heart Math Solution, and he has also authored, co-authored a new book called Heart Intelligence. Um, apparently, it's the first book in a decade that's come out of heart math. He co-authored it with... Doc Childre, uh, Deborah Rosman, and, and Roland McCready. And so um, there is, there's, a, there's a new baby you guys have birthed. Yeah, I'm excited about it. You know, we took a long time between books. Uh, we've done so many other things, and we just didn't get around to writing an actual book. Uh-huh. Uh, we put this book out through an exclusive arrangement that we were proud to get with Amazon, where it's available on you know, Kindle and print-on-demand. Wonderful. And we put it out through them, and we, you know, we, we've, we just wanted to get the information out. We wanted to didn't have to want to go through an eighteen month publishing cycle. Right, right. It took us a long time to write the book. We put it out, and I'm proud to say that we released one email message about the book last week, and it went to the number seventy four on Amazon.com. That's amazing. It amazed me, and I think it just shows that there was a, a such a strong interest in what we do, and that people were hungry for a new book. Yeah, so yeah. go to uh, Amazon.com, look up the book Heart Intelligence, Connecting with the Intuitive Guidance of the Heart, and you can get that book. It's really inexpensive. I mean, even Amazon now, under this agreement with them, is running deals. There's a special on this thing right now where it's not much money to get the book. So That's fabulous. So Heart Intelligence. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a lot of things that we're talking about today in there. We're going to talk on some, at some point about global coherence and things like that. There are yeah. chapters in there about that. Yeah. Uh, there's chapters in about uh, some of the research that we, you and I, Christine, have been discussing for listeners today, and, and a lot of things there. And I'm not just trying to oversell the book here, but if people are interested, this is a great way, an inexpensive way for them to, to learn and find out more. Yeah. And what I love about um, this coherence is, you guys have discovered that this goes beyond the individual. This isn't just about helping a person to be happier, healthier, living a more fulfilling life. That this has an effect that does and can reach further beyond. So can you first share with our listeners a little bit about your perspective about what's going on in the world and how this, the Global um, Consciousness or Global Coherence Project and Initiative, sorry, Global Coherence Initiative and um, this work, how how this is going to potentially impact the world? Well, great. We'll do this in chunks, okay? Okay. <laughs> I have a lot to say about these things. This is a, it's a lot about what I talk about live, and you know, from the, the live events that I speak at around the world. But you know, we're we're at an interesting point in history. I, I think we're living in an era that has more change happening in less time than ever before, and there's plenty of mm-hmm. evidence to support that. So we're in this era of high-speed change. And, and not all the change is positive either. It's not like a whole it's, bunch of positive change. Well, it's difficult. Let's put it this way. Yeah. If, I think the trend graph is moving in the right direction. Uh-huh. We are headed into a new and very different world unlike anything we've ever seen before. And it is happening very quickly. At the same time, that much change happening in a short amount of time creates chaos. Right. A lot of what we see is the chaos. And one of the ways in which I see it, just in a generalist sense, is, in, is polarization. 
Huh. It, it looks to me like it's almost like two worlds happening on the same planet at times. Right, right. And so this huge amount of polarization is happening, and we're seeing the world's problems are clearly viewed now. I think the communications that, that we have today are allowing us to see into things more quickly and more deeply, so we see the problems. Right. At the same time, Christine, there are millions and millions, hundreds of millions of people around the world whose values have changed, mm-hmm. who want something different. Yeah. whose intelligence has just gone in a different direction. Their awareness has increased. They have a different set of values and beliefs, and they are manifesting those in their in their lives, and they are creating change. Yeah, and I, I think that based on what I see in my practice and see in my um, classes as well, my workshops, is that there are a lot of people who thought they had it, like, all put together, like they knew where they were supposed to be in their lives, and they were happy and healthy, and now they're feeling stuck, that there's something wrong, that there's something within them that needs to change, that there's something externally that they need to show up for to help the world to change. Many of us are aligning with the next part of our mission. Yes, that's a great way of putting it. So, and I think that's happening for people, and that can be awkward at times and uncomfortable yeah. at times. It happens to me. I understand the feeling. I really do, and I have a lot of care and compassion for everyone, all the listeners right now who may be experiencing that in their lives. Right. But it's moving in the right direction, mm-hmm. and you know we are creating an, another network of social coherence, and it's happening everywhere. You mentioned that this is, this broadcast is being listened to in sixty countries. Yeah, we've we're just measuring on the website. We reached sixty five countries over a couple of of weeks yeah. just with the replay. Yeah. So this is global. You know. Yeah, absolutely. And a lot of the things that I do are definitely international and global. And I go to places like China, and I go to New Zealand, and I'll be in Europe. You know, in, in May. You know, speaking. And so. It's everywhere, and I see the same type of movement everywhere that I go. So I know that it's much bigger than just an individual, and it's certainly not bound by, you know, uh, countries and right. boundaries and borders. Right, and cultures, yeah. It's a big thing. It's going on all over the planet. So we're moving the world now towards a, a more coherent world. And uh, I know it looks like, no, we're not because of all the problems, but I still feel like we are. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's it's just taking some time. It's not an overnight process, but I will say this. It's a very quick process, quicker than we've ever had before. Uh-huh. And that's a little disconcerting to many people. It creates a sense of anxiety. We don't know where things are going. Yeah. We can't see around the corner yet. I get asked in interviews all the time, when you talk about the new changes in the new world, what's it going to be like? And I had to come up with a realistic answer. That answer is I don't know. Uh-huh. I just know what's happening. Right. And I see indications of it, and I see a more cooperative world. I see one that operates with less competition and more cooperation. Mm-hmm. I see a flip going on in terms of uh, who comes out in things, you know, where a lot of times people that tend to be more spiritual in nature or, or approach life with a more humanistic uh, set of values don't necessarily come out as the ones in power. Mm-hmm. I see that changing. Yeah. Well, I Many too. things are changing now. And so we just have to stay the course, and it starts with what we do moment to moment, day to day, Mm -hmm. but never lose your heart, never lose your hope, even in the midst of looking at some of these problems that are horrific. Mm -hmm. So part of my own personal work is to maintain a certain balance of having the care and the compassion and not letting myself get sucked into the despair, uh, you know, having uh, sympathy rather than compassion. Mm Mm-hmm having my care turn into an overburdened sense of responsibility and worry yeah, because none of that serves things well. Right, right. That's the balance game for me. So you talked about social coherence. Yeah. What is that? It's really about, you know, again, the cooperative things that are happening in the world about uh, more coherence, you know, showing up in ways in which people relate to one another, in ways in which things like, uh, business dysfunction, mm-hmm. uh, ways in which countries work together. That would be just sort of high-level examples of social coherence. Uh-huh. Just more in general, how, how do you function as a society? You know? Yeah. And yeah. what are the rules around that? And what are the values in that? You know. And so I think that's happening. It's beginning to show itself. And yeah, the polarization is too. You know? Right. Uh, yeah. It's all there to be to be uh, observed. But the social coherence is definitely happening, and we've done a lot of social science research. We know that, you know, that change occurs across populations. Uh I'll give you an example. We've got large studies we've done years back in in Fortune 500 companies doing heart math training, and we see these statistically significant shifts in all kinds of behavioral changes, attitudinal changes, and health changes 
when we went back in and we began to look at, you know, the amount of people that were really practicing what they were trained in, we found it was not the majority. Interesting. But yet the company was still changing. Huh. Something's happening energetically. Right, right. And, and you know, from my perspective, it's, it, it all begins energetically. And yes. that's, that's where change occurs. And so, um, you, you know, you're, you're talking about shifting individuals, shifting corporations, shifting society, shifting the world on an energetic le- level that affects the way we behave, the way we deal with each other, and, and, and the quality of life that we have for people in the world. So yeah. how do you go about scientifically measuring something like this? Well, certainly the social science research that we do that I've mentioned, these surveys, psychometrically mm-hmm. validated. Sure. right surveys, et cetera, but the other part that we're doing now relates to an aspect of HeartMath called the Global Coherence Initiative. Uh-huh. It's part of our nonprofit. You can find out about the Global Coherence Initiative by going to heartmath.org rather than .com. Okay. So there's two parts of HeartMath, a for-profit and a nonprofit. So go to heartmath.org, click on the Global Coherence Initiative tab. This is a really cool part of HeartMath, something I've been involved in since its inception, and a lot of, uh, like you mentioned in the beginning, a lot of other people, other authors, other leaders are involved in this as well. Right. So we wanted to do, know exactly that, Christine. First of all, we wanted to, to create a vehicle where people could come together and use their heart, focus, care, and their intention, their energetics, really, uh-huh. to help shift things in the planet, to reduce some of the discord and create more harmony and enduring peace, et cetera. Right. So a lot of organizations do that, and we applaud every one of them that does that. So we did ours, and there's about 75,000 members of Global Coherence Initiative. You can join that's, for free. That's a lot. And they're in over 125 000. countries. Wow, wow. Now, so we have things where we send out care focuses and ways in which people participate energetically. Mm-hmm. But it's hard math, so, yeah, we brought some science to the party. Mm-hmm. Good, good. And, so we're gonna, and I'm going to want to hear all about that, and I'm sure my, my listeners do too. Um, but we have to go to another quick break. More with Howard in just a few moments. Come back again I want you to stay the next time Do you know how to achieve wellness in all areas of your life? Hi, I'm Mary Jane Mack. Signs of wellness are a capacity to love and ability to nurture, a sense of purpose, a good sense of humor and plenty of fun in your life, a concern for others and a respect for the environment, a conscious commitment to personal excellence, a sense of balance and integrated lifestyle, and capacity to cope with whatever life presents. Well, people enjoy their lives and want them to last as long as possible. That's why the wellness mindset usually accompanies other constructive healthy lifestyle habits by adopting a wellness mindset and behaviors like eating well taking the right nutrition for the body exercising and saying affirmations are just a few things to structure a healthy system of values and beliefs call us at 888-777-4232 that's 888-777-4232 and visit us at maryjanemack.com hi everyone this is dr pat The ancient Inca root vegetable maca is world-renowned for its wide array of health benefits. As a family-run company of true maca specialists, the maca team's mission is to provide you with fresh, organic, premium-quality maca powders at a fair price. Amazing. All of the products are always organically grown, fair-traded, GMO-free, fresh, and potent. So don't take my word for it. Experience the life-changing benefits of maca today. Visit themacateam.com. Have you been seeing numbers like 111 and 222 everywhere you go? Do you feel that the universe may be trying to get your attention, perhaps offering a message of some sort? As it turns out, numerical patterns and certain types of geometry form the very fabric of our reality, from cells under a microscope to the astronomy of our night sky. At Stellar Reflections, we offer special sessions which tap into these patterns, designed specifically to support you on your journey. The 111 and 222 activations are sessions activating new patterns in your energy field, which in turn can help you create new patterns in your life. After just one session with a practitioner, either in person or via distance, clients report gaining greater clarity, becoming more intuitive, and honoring their inner truth as they move forward in their lives. Curious about what these transformational sessions might do for you? 
Call 425-999-9836 or visit StellarReflections.com. That's StellarReflections.com. Welcome back to the Christine Hepchurch Show with Benny Mathers in the background choosing the perfect music. It's what I do, you know. Yeah. I mean, uh, it's great. Obviously, we're talking about the heart, yes. soul, all about it, and we've learned a little bit of a thing about our guest today. He used to be a former drummer. I don't know. He could be uh, teaming yes. up with Neil Diamond anytime he, soon. I, I think know. He's still he's, on tour. He's a former rock musician. Yeah. L- little little tidbit that mm-hmm. we're sharing with you, and we we're talking about Howard Martin of Heart Math, and you know Howard. Um, it, the, the question becomes, you've got these 75,000 people who are becoming like in, intentionally and in a heart, heart-based heart way connecting to help shift the world. And you talked about the science to sort of measure it. What are you talking about? Did I say something about that? You, you <laughs> did, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what we're doing, we, we're... We, our researchers and scientists, in, in conjunction with others, are building you know, call, uh, what's called the Global Coherence Monitoring System. They develop very sensitive technology that can measure changes occurring in the Earth's energetic fields. Ooh, Those two cool. fields are the geomagnetic field uh-huh. and the ionosphere. A lot of research has already been done demonstrating that these two fields are affecting human health and behavior on an individual and mass scale. Really? Yes, that's well documented. There's movies about it. There's a lot of things out there showing the connection between changes occurring in the geomagnetic and ionospheric fields and what's happening to us. Everything from brainwave to heart function to social events, it just goes on and on. So we're deploying this system around the world, and uh, it measures subtle changes. All this information is being fed back to our research labs here in Northern California. Uh Now, we have a site in Northern California. We have one in Northern Canada. We have a third site in Lithuania, a fourth site in Saudi Arabia. Wow. We have another site in New Zealand and another site in South Africa. And so we're deploying more sites as well. But what's happening is, is we are able now to do very detailed understanding research about the effects these fields are having on us. Uh-huh. And at the same time, we're testing a hypothesis, and it's exactly that, a hypothesis, saying that, the energetic fields produced by the 7 billion people on this planet are also impacting the Earth's energetic fields. Right. That it's a two-way communication. Yeah. And so we're researching that as, a, as an understanding. Now, there are some cool people also involved in this, people you, I know you've probably had on your show, Greg Braden, mm-hmm. Bruce Lipton, yep. Lynn McTaggart. Yep. You know, Fabulous they're all, all friends of mine and all part of Global Coherence Initiative. And Jack Hanfield is another. And... He said to me one time early on when we were first starting it about eight years ago that he felt this experiment could be the most important one in the history of the world. Mm. I asked him why. He said, because if you show that we are actually impacting the Earth's fields, it will show that all of our prayers, intentions, meditations, thoughts, and feelings are having a measurable impact we can see. Mm -hmm. And that would be a paradigm shifter. Yeah. Well, there's already evidence, right, that that, um, a very big event caused a, a shift in, um, you know, in, in the energetics of the world, right? Well, there's indications. There wouldn't form an experiment. You, you're talking about my PowerPoint show <laughs> that I gave to Greg Braden. <laughs> uh. Uh, parts of it. Yeah, there's um, indications through Roger Nelson's Global Coherence Project, which he uses random number generators showing a huge spike that happened at 9-11. Right. There's also information we got from the government weather satellite, space weather satellites showing a huge spike in the geomagnetic field right at 9-11 as well. When I present that live, Christine, I say, you know, does this prove anything? And I'm asking a rhetorical question because mm-hmm. the answer is no. No, right. I, I'm a former research yeah. statistician. That, that doesn't prove anything. That's, that's a correlation and a fascinating one. Correct. Correlation and a fascinating one because the next question I say is, 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 is this interesting? <laughs> 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 when you see this massive spike at 9 a.m. on you know, yeah. September 11th in the geomagnetic field, you got to wonder, right? Right, right. <laughs> Huge spike. 
right at that at that at that point in time. And you got to step back and go, well, what caused that? Well, we know there were no naturally occurring causes like changes in the sun's radiational patterns, anything like that that was mm-hmm. occurring at that time. Right. So it lends you to think that that event was in some way associated. Sure. But we have to look at things through a really solid empirical scientific lens for uh-huh. it to be good science. Right. Yeah. So um, do you have people sort of showing up at the same time to to, to focus their, their energy, or does it vary? And, and it, is time important? It varies. We leave it asynchronous, meaning we mm-hmm. recognize people have different schedules, different times, and all of that. So we can set it up so that it could be all at the same time. But my feeling is, is it's nonlinear. You know? uh-huh. right. It doesn't have to be at the same time. Yeah. The kind of work that, that we endeavor to do and the others are doing at this energetic level really don't have to function within the same laws of time and space. Yeah, and, and it's interesting because, you know, I know that there's some evidence, some su- suggestion that, all time is occurring simultaneously, that it, our, our perception of time is really based on the fact that we're in human form and it really doesn't exist. But I do know that there have been several instances where, um, like, I've been, you know, going to do a, a, a distance session on somebody, and I've gotten started late because of my schedule. Or there was one time when I actually, um, you know, forgot missed the appointment, did it, like, two hours later, and the person had significant experiences and again, that's just, you know, they, they had some expectation about it. But I do find it interesting that perhaps our, you know, the, the notion of time is just a, a notion and not the truth. Yeah, and that's a big subject. I usually get more confused than I do clear when I start uh-huh. looking at those things. But right. I did see a speaker recently that gave, had an interesting concept that, you know, that, that time, we see time as moving forward. He says, no, it's moving backwards. If the future already exists, we draw it to ourselves through the choices we make. Yeah, so the time is moving the other direction. Okay, so I've, I've got a question for you. Do you believe that there are parallel realities and we're actually jumping between them? Uh, yeah, I think that that's quite possibly true. I think, you know, there's a lot of things like that I can speculate on. Mm-hmm. To be honest with you, Christine, I like to do those things and think about them because they're sort of entertaining, but I never get a real clear answer. Uh-huh. And so I choose instead to focus on, you know, the reality I'm in. Right. And choose to explore the possibility that the purpose of life is to love. Yeah. Okay. That's, and that's a really important point. And so the, the energy, the, the, the motivation behind HeartMath Institute, behind the, the Global Coherence Initiative, Behind, you know, all, all this information that you're sharing is really about making this a more loving world, isn't it? It's about reducing human suffering. Oh, yeah. That's I'm, what I do. If uh, I think about my life and what I'm about now, this, this 40-some years into this kind of work and uh-huh. 20-some years here at HeartMath, 25, it comes down to this. I want the world to be a better place, and I want life to be easier for people. Right. So right. I think the going through the heart and the intelligence of the heart is the way to get that done. Mm-hmm. And or certainly a way in the way that works for me. And I just want um, us to be able to move through this transition into this new and, and wonderful world in this kind of general uh, process as it can be. Right, right. And that's what motivates me for being, uh, for getting up in the morning and doing what I do and, uh, and for actually really appreciating the opportunity to share something like that with so many people around the country and around the world do a show like yours so thank yeah. you for having me oh it's been a, a joy and what an important mission you were on and i you know i find this fascinating you know I, again i've got the the scientific background but also the the energetic um background as well and so i i i see the importance of this to help shift the energy of the planet and um Again, I want to share with the listeners again, they can go to heartmath.com to find some of the contraptions, find lots of interesting videos, information about what HeartMath offers. Um, also, heartmath.org um, for the nonprofit version and globalcoherence.org. You've been listening to The Christine Upchurch Show, stellar conversations to illuminate your journey. Each week, this show engages some of the most outstanding visionaries on the planet in lively dialogue to inspire you to become that bright light you're meant to be. Join Christine every Friday at 11 a.m. Pacific Time on KKNW AM 1150 and TransformationTalkRadio.com. For more information about the transformative healing work of Christine, visit www.StellarReflections.com. And for weekly topics, visit www.Transformation.com. 
informationtalkradio.com.